one one thing I wanted to um, <coughs> point out is an article uh, related to mathematics um, in the Financial Times. Um, that's um, um, that's a, a, Brit a British newspaper um, published by owned by a Japanese company. <coughs> um, it's an obituary. Um, historian who recovered lost voices of the marginalized, Natalie Zimon Davis, pioneer of microhistory, 1928 to 2023. <clears throat> one, one reason this obituary caught my eye is that I, I know her because um, uh, at the operator uh, seminar uh, every week, um, which Chandler Davis was one of the organizers for, for, um, uh, for uh, he arrived about, just about um, was, so about was close to 50 years, over 40 years. Um, <clears throat> the, the, afterwards, there'd be a seminar dinner. And uh, often I attended, and uh, often uh, uh, Chandler Davis's wife uh, accompanied him to the dinner. And, um, this, is, uh, this, is, uh, this is who she was. <clears throat> um, it is a measure of Natalie Zimon Davis's influence as a historian. <clears throat> Most people would struggle to name more than a handful of Renaissance monarchs, but a good many have heard of an obscure 16th century French peasant called Martin Guerre. But to be precise, they know about the imposter who assumed Guerre's identity and took his wife and property before his deception was exposed and he was executed for his crime. Davis, who has died at the age of 94, published her groundbreaking, The Return of Martin Guerre in France in 1982. And in the English speaking world a year later, the book reached the readership beyond the dreams of most professional historians. Because even before its publication, the makers of the Tour de Martin Guerre, a hit French film starring Gérard Dupardieu and Nathalie Bay had used her as a consultant. Um, oh, and, and um, it, it, it um, mentions in 1948, she married Chandler Davis, a mathematics, a mathematics graduate student and fellow radical. In these early years of the Cold War, their activism attracted the attention of the US government which seized their passports in 1952 after her return from a research trip in France. <clears throat> it was a blessing in disguise, for she wrote, she wrote in a 2013 article for the New York Review of Books. Unable for years to revisit France, she immersed herself in rare book collections in the US, gathering much material for her future work. After years of part-time teaching, Simone Davis and her husband took jobs at the University of Toronto, where she taught history from 1963 to 1971, then to Berkeley, then to Princeton, and back here uh, as a, a, a professor of America. So, um, on the subject of movies, which is how, sort of how she started out, uh, related to how she started out, um, <clears throat> At one uh, seminar dinner, relatively recently, you can tell from the story, one seminar dinner, um, we, we happened to be um, talking about the movie, uh, um, about, um, well, I'll ask you, I'll, ask, I'll see how many people uh, remember uh, or know who, who it's about, which mathematician it's about, A Beautiful Mind. Okay, yeah, all right, yeah. So Nash, together with von Neumann, uh, was one of the pioneers of uh, mathematical economics. <clears throat> well, uh, he was a professor at, uh, at Princeton University, right? This is when uh, uh, Mrs. Davis uh, was there. 
so, so that, when we were discussing this, um, really she, she, she hadn't really, she wasn't aware of it, but uh, some people had been to it. Um, I'd seen the movie, and, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and after it became clear that um, even after John Nash was unfortunately banned from, uh, he was unfortunately uh, enough uh, not himself that he was uh, asked not to attempt not to um, frequent the um, university uh, campus, university grounds. But Mrs. Davis said, um, well, uh, now, now I now I know who that was skulking around the campus. <clears throat> well, he, he did uh, come to uh, he, he he did meet me um, right again at the very the very end of when he was coming back from an award. I think it might have been the Nobel Prize uh, in New York. Um, it was an accident. Uh, and in taxi, they might not have been wearing seat belts because they were thrown out of the taxi. That was it. Oh. Well, okay. Um, you might, you might, um, I, I haven't, I, this just came out on Saturday and I just uh, I noticed that I, uh, it might be in, in a, it might be in the Globe and Mail. I didn't see it in the Toronto Star or the uh, National Post. Right, you know, and the, the news might be. Okay, so what have we been, um, um, what have we been, been um, discussing? Well, um, but one thing we've been discussing recently is the, um, 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 how would you describe it? Uh, the, uh, the, what have we been discussing about Pascal's findings? Sorry? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yes, the, the Hausdorff moment problem. Yeah. <clears throat> and um, that was, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know the exact history of it, but it was um, brought up and discussed for a while, uh, well over 100 years ago. I guess. And it's all, the room is all. It seems now that we have found the solution um, using um, methods related to see their algebras and cases. And it depends on looking at the Pascal triangle and interpreting it, um, uh, using it to, to um, somehow uh, uh, work with the, um, the moments of a measure, okay? Or a sequence of numbers which might be the moment of a measure. Okay, so, um, and, um, so you have um, zero, one, and two, and so on. It might be the moment. And, um, and then the the, um, the diagram with monoplistes, uh, which um, is connected by two lines to the, each point connected by two edges to the um, two points, the two adjacent points, and the two points sort of below it, the next to it in the next uh, line, next next row. <clears throat> so if you if you say that uh, if you apply the algorithm that the sum of two such two adjacent points in one row should be equal to the uh, number in the preceding row, then you end up with a full uh, <clears throat> a full uh, panoply of numbers, right? Full pan a full panorama of um, of numbers. So maybe the Maybe the Greek phrase pan, P-A-N, is not so welcome after three years of having it in a different context. So I won't, I won't use it. But, uh, <clears throat> but after all, you, have, you still have the, uh, the Pan-American Games. I think they're going to be held this year. So, all right. Um, 
So, um, so you fill out the whole uh, graph, the whole the whole diagram with, with the numbers, and then um, you you uh, know you well you notice that the uh, the different sloping lines parallel to the main one going down to the left are um, they register the ver the various levels of the various derivatives, discrete derivatives, the different differences of the um, of the sequence. Okay, so, so a a zero minus a one should be the number here, and um, a one a a one minus a two should be the number here. This is what that equals that. You just keep on going. You get all the higher order differences, uh, different sequences of okay. the sequence. <clears throat> okay. Well, remember, uh, uh, um, the, um, the story about derivatives that the, the economy, the higher order Russian mathematicians, Soviet mathematicians uh, had noticed that all the, all the derivatives were uh, of the uh, economy were, um, were negative, okay, all the higher order derivatives. Well, in this case, uh, I guess we want it to be positive, right? Of course, it's just a question of how you look at it, I mean, what you consider first. But well, if it's just in fact in two numbers, they can, the point is they can all have the same sign. And if we just say this plus that is the plus that equals that, then that says that, uh, that this is less than equal to that. If they, um, This is uh, possible. I mean, that's that, 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 that because I'm equivalent to saying this is possible. And uh, so we, uh, but all, and the condition then for being the sequence of moments is that all the higher order derivatives are positive, okay? And, uh, and, you, and, and then we'll get a, a measure and then the measure of the whole, inter, the measure on the interval. And, um, and the um, <clears throat> measure of the whole interval will be a zero. That's the zero moment, okay? The interval of x to the zero. And, uh, let, let's put the um, x's in here. We have one equals x to the zero. So we have x and um, x squared and, and so on. <clears throat> then the, the same algorithm, if we, if we, um, if we, um, Want to know what polynomials have, have, have the, we filled the graph with numbers. We want to know what polynomials have the uh, have integral equal to that number. So you just apply the same algorithm. This plus this equals that. So this is one minus x. And this is, uh, and it turns out this is, you have to do a little arithmetic, but this one is x, uh, uh, this is x times one minus x. And this is one minus x, the square of one minus x. Okay, so you just uh, go down the uh, <clears throat> diagram, and um, <clears throat> it's, it's, it's interesting to fill it in with these um, polynomials. The, um, we're, we're, what we're saying then is the condition that we, that we, we uh, are discussing is the condition that all the higher order derivatives are positive. It's the same as saying that a certain linear functional on on this uh, on the group spanned by these polynomials is, is uh, positive, okay? It, it, I mean, it's, well, uh, it's a, it, 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 so we're taking it to be an ordered group where the positive elements are just uh, these numbers appearing in the various rows. Note that this, these maps are in vectors, so it's an increasing sequence of, all, of subgroups of, of polynomials. So the overall group is some of that. Okay, but then it goes on like this, and it's really, um, really uh, entertaining, if not even inspiring, how how, uh, how uh, beautiful it is. Uh, so the you have um, if you say that these are the positive elements, then saying the the um, numbers you get, uh, the numbers you get are positive. So that the, that the, the, by the functional, if you consider it as a functional on the group, the polynomial. Then it's a positive function, so that's um, it's ordered by Pascal. Then there's this other order. Somehow we 
uh, the idea of looking at this other order, um, which was strict positivity on the interval, on the interior of the interval. And um, <clears throat> somehow we got the idea of proving that the order of these two cones were equal, okay? Zx is a group of uh, a group, and, um, and then you have two positive cones, and and um, <coughs> it seems it's very helpful to prove that they're equal. Okay, and it's, it's really mysterious because you, before you talked about the pointwise one at all, the strict pointwise on the open interval, this Pascal one, you get a functional on the ordered group, and you say it's equal to one on on. on the order group. Those are called states, positive functionals on an ordered group with an order unit. That means some positive multiple of this is bigger than anything. Um, if you if you um, if you look at um, uh, if you have an order group and, and if it happens to be a ring, uh, 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 and and such that the uh, unit of the ring is the uh, Order unit, the special special order unit. That's what we're talking about. I guess you could just say the rate, the unit is an order unit, and uh, then you talk about the state normalized with respect to the this unit, and the states form a um, a compact convex set, and then the, and it's on a it's matrizable and it's um it's a count everything's countable and and it um sits on a um, the compact, compact convex subset of a, what's called a locally convex space. So it's well behaved to find no one term applies. Uh, you, know, you know, you would know that this compact convex set of state is, is generated by its extreme point. It's, it's, it's the smallest uh, uh, compact uh, convex set containing the extreme point. Okay. And, uh, um, well, so it's, it's interesting to try to determine the extreme point. Well, it turns out that if it's a ring, then the extreme points of, um, are multiplicative. Then that's very easy, not where you just multiply a polynomial. But then it's very easy to say that the, the C, the extreme points are just parameterized by um, um, extreme, extreme states. Just parameterized by the closed interval zero one. Okay, because what, 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 it's a state, so it's equal to one uh, in, in, at the um, generator of the first uh, at the x to the zero. It's equal to one there. And in the second row, it's equal to say t at x and, and one minus t at um, one minus x. And those those are both positive numbers. Those are supposed to be positive numbers because um, um, these are positive elements in the in the positive cone. Forget about the pointwise one for the moment, which is the same. Um, so, so it's just um, uh, the uh, must be some number which is greater than equal to zero, and one minus it is greater than equal to zero. That's what means it's less than equal to one. So, uh, the interval zero to one polarizes the space. Sorry, the extreme points. Extreme points. Well, now, how many people have worked with extreme points of a, of a convex set? This is a standard uh, theory, okay? Um, I'm, I, you could maybe have a course on convex sets, or books on convex sets, okay? So this is an incomplete uh, discussion I mean, to, to introduce someone to the subject just thoroughly, okay? So I'm just saying that uh, if you have... Um, Compact convex set, and it's uh, in, the, in the topology that's metrizable, so you have an accountability. Then the extreme points, the set of extreme points, uh, form a, um, a, a Borel set. So, in fact, in this case, it's a co compact subset. The whole set is compact, and the extreme points form the compact subset because the, the topology 
you have to check. It's not hard to check that the, uh, the topology on the stage. I mean, the weak star topology. You, you, you um, the point was converged. The state, the state converged on a particular, on each uh, single polynomial, and then that's the convergence. Okay, that's the topology. And that's um, <coughs> that's uh, compact. And um, because um, Well, uh, okay, uh, uh, and, but, but what's important is that um, if you have any point in the compact convex set, then it's an average of a string point. Now, what does an average mean? It's not necessarily a finite average, it's a finite dimensional simplex. Everyone familiar with what a finite dimensional simplex is? It's, it's, um, it's that's big words for familiar things. It's in two dimensions. In the plane, if you have a two dimensional simplex, yeah, it's a triangle, right? Are you familiar with that? You, okay, you know, you're familiar with triangles. Okay, well, actually, that's those are already interesting, right? But um, that's, that's high school geometry. A lot of high school, well, goes beyond that circles, ellipses, and so on. Well, at least we used to, used to. But, uh, <clears throat> um, but the in three dimensions, it's um, okay, here's, here's a riddle. Here, here's a, a quiz question. If you look at a, a, an Egyptian pyramid, is, is it a, a three-dimensional? Is it a three-dimensional simplex or not? All right, good, good, uh, uh, good thinking. Because uh, one of the three, several of the faces, all of the faces are triangles, except for uh, the one you can't see. So you might you know, jump to conclusions. I, I think I've done that in the past. But, uh, anyway, so. <clears throat> In the finite dimensional synthesis, um, every point is a, is a finite uh, uh, weighted average of, um, of, um, of, the, of the finite of many extreme points. By the way, this is a simplex. It's, uh, it, you, uh, but uh, we're not, not going to need that because it's true for any compact convex set that every point is a, um, is a uh, average with respect to a measure on the extreme point. With respect to a probability measure, but that's exactly what we're trying to find, right? That, what does the whole Hausdorff moment problem say? It says that um, if you have um, measures on the interval zero one, then the moments are given this way. In other words, they come from a functional on um, on the um, this order group, and 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 the extreme points are um, extreme states are the interval zero one. And if it's a measure, it gives you a it gives you a state. Well, if it's a point, if it's a point, and if it is a state, then then you have a measure. You have a by the uh, general theory of convex sets, you have a measure on the set of extreme points, and the state is the average of the extreme point, um, which is the average of the points on the interval zero one. And that means when you integrate, what that means is when you integrate a polynomial. You uh, integrate it with respect to that measure over the interval zero one. Okay, so I'm, I'm going through things quickly, but uh, this is all. This is already the um, well. Okay, you you um, there's a question. Um, we have the measure, and on polynomials, the the um, integral with respect to the measure is the uh, what the given measure is uh, with respect to the polynomial. But uh, to determine the measure, polynomials will determine the measure on the interval zero one. You have to prove that. So that's a general theorem. If, 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 if you know the Weierstrass approximation theorem, then the um, then the um, polynomials are dense, and so the the measure is determined. The measure is the one coming from the theory of convex sets. Okay, in functional. But if, if we um, um, we don't in general. Even if even if we know the polynomials are dense, we don't know the measure is continuous with respect to the soup norm. We just know it's a positive function. So, but if we knew the order structure coming from this pointwise order were the same as this, then we would know the function was continuous on polynomials with respect to the soup norm on the interval zero one. Okay. So that's, that's it, it's a sort of a long story, and maybe even it's too um, uh, too much trouble to uh, make it an essay. But I would I would welcome. Either one essay one or essay two to be um, 
about uh, Pascal Strangle and its, its, its historical significance. It's, uh, its significance in, in, um, in um, relating to history, it's the moment of health for a moment of problem. Well, well, yes, we're, we're discussing the proof, okay? Uh, yeah, but uh, and and uh, and, that, and and that's the condition is that all the higher uh, all the higher order uh, differences are also positive. Well, yes, I just said as I just said that that, that well, it's the different it's the it's the derivative, it's the discrete derivatives of the moment sequence. Well, uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, not well, not in itself. You have a good. I mean, if you just look at, I mean, no one diagram, no no one diagonal, is a moment sequence without all the other uh, uh, diagonals having positive entries. Okay, but you, what you're observing is something really neat, really nice. If you forget about the, if you put, if you fill out the whole diagram, but then you forget about the first uh, uh, sloping line. And you only look at all the ones from this, from this, then there's all positive, right? And they have the same algorithm, which was this is that and so on. So that means that, that um, of course, the number here is not one, but it doesn't, uh, we, we, uh, it's, uh, it's some number. And so uh, the, this second sequence of positive numbers is a moment sequence for some, for some measure also. Yeah. So that's um, a nice observation. So you've got a whole sequence of uh, measures. Be interesting to see, you know, you could might I haven't this hasn't occurred to me before, but, uh, but you might be interested in in terms of the measure and find out and find but some find out if there's a simple relationship between the two measures. Just one uh, one for instance um uh, it's absolutely continuous with respect to the second one. This is the second one for instance this is a, just a random guess, but this is absolutely continuous with respect to the first measure in the sense of measure, in the sense of measure theory. That, that's a, you might uh, take a look at that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because the, sort of the, taking the moment, sorry, taking the, the, the differences of the moments is a, uh, it's a slightly non-obvious construction, but uh, well, okay, that, that, that's a, that's a good question. <clears throat> All right, um, oh, you know this is a really interesting topic. We could keep, I could, I could be happy to keep talking about it, but I think we ought to get back. You know, case theory and sociology are so important. There's so many other applications. I think we ought to get back to the main um, stream. And, I, and uh, one of the main uh, theorems is plot theory distance. This, this, is, uh, this, is, this, this is a setting for, for AF algebras, and it doesn't have anything to do with plot theory distance. As I pointed out, there is a theorem for, a, for AF algebras that directly uses plot theory distance, okay? And that's the, uh, if you have, um, the, in c algebra theory, it's, it's quite interesting to look at um, at um, of, of one each algebra by another. Um, you have a closed two sided ideal of a big algebra, and then you have quotes, and of course, it's a, what's called a short exact sequence. <coughs> well, um, so you get a sequence of K group from, from zero goes to K zero of, from of i goes to k0 of a goes to k0 of uh, a over i goes to zero. But this is a sorry, k0 well, zero, which is k0 of uh, zero. But, um, this, is, so this is a short exact sequence, right? That, that uh, short means you have zeros at the end, that's the jargon. 
and um, and then in the middle it means in the middle is some um, exact in all three places. So it means the first map is in the first non-zero map is injective, and the last one is surjective. Well, there are only two maps, non-zero, only two non-zero maps. So the first one is um, injective, and the second one is, is surjective. But then um, the exactness in the middle is uh, something that um, is a little more complicated. Everyone familiar with what exactness means? Who is that in the back row? I can't. No, I can't see you. I can't see you at all. Sorry. Um, the, the, um, why don't you quickly tell me your name, Jeffrey? Jeffrey. Okay. So J uh, Justin. Justin. Okay. I'm sorry. And and you. And you? Okay. And, and I. You know. I've. I've um, Temporarily um, got separated from my listed name. But, uh, that's um, terrible. But, uh, I, I assume you can hear me, but uh, apparently I can't quite hear you. But uh, I um, almost maybe enough, well enough. I hope you can see. And, but you know, if you were going to ask a question or, or say what you say that you didn't know something I was talking about, or that. Uh, and so I should say more about it, or or that you already did remember what I was talking about. It would be nice to see people a little closer. Another time. <clears throat> um, okay, so um, so this is the second sequence. This is a short exact sequence. The second sequence is short, but not in general exact. Okay, so but but. Happens that it is exact in the middle. That's because of this particular function. If you look at an arbitrary function on groups and it has that takes values in groups, then you get a zero here. I mean, if they get the took zero into zero, that would be uh, surprising if it didn't. You get you get the same looking sequence, but uh, in general it won't even be exact in the middle. But with k zero, that is one of the special properties of k zero. It's exact in the middle, so you get a you get a Extremely short exact sequence, okay? Or you get a short sequence, but then the, the, um, there's an exact uh, point, the one point of it is exact, which, which says, of course, that the image is equal to the kernel. And the same is true for K1. Well, it's not surprising since uh, K1 is, is S of K0. K0 of S of A. K0, K1 of A is. Of S of A. And uh, we have K1 is 0, which of course is 0. And then K1 of I, K1 of A. So this is, a, so it, this is also exact here. And then K1 is A over I. K1 is 0. Over I. So neither, but neither of these sequences is in general exact in the middle because there are what are called index maps. In, in real or complex case, complex or real case, uh, going from the lower right to the upper left. And then in the complex case, also going from the upper right to the lower left. But that's, um, but this is actually not surprising, okay? That's because I, as I mentioned, we know that K1, as I said now, K1 is the same as K0 after S. And what very distinctly says that K0 is equal to K1 after S. So by taking the taking suspension, uh, this is from um, the Banach algebra, you look at functions from the line into it, it vanishes both ends. It vanishes both ends, either the whole line or or the inter open interval zero one. And um, okay. so in other words, S uh, taking the suspension, which is a functor, of course, it's a very natural operation. It flips K0 and K1. Well, so suppose we want to, in this picture, if we could flip this diagram so that uh, 
the top one came to the bottom. What, what you do is you just apply it to the suspension. If, if it's, well, well, actually we don't, okay, let's apply it without this one. We don't know this one, okay? But you take suspensions instead. Instead of A, you take S of I, and S of A, this is also going to be a short exact S, S A over S I, which is the same as S of A over I. That's an exercise. But then, um, if you apply the fixed term exact sequence, well, the part of it that you know is exact to, to this um, um, to this sequence, then we get some. Well, we'll get the same sequence as this, the same fixed term sequence as this, with suspensions everywhere. But then, if we take the but but the suspension comes right after the K, right? So if we take away the, the suspension and switch zero and one, what happens is this just gets flipped up like that. So we get a map coming down here. Now, of course, we don't get a map here, but we all we know there is one. Okay. So uh, because um, um, because this is now um, k zero. Okay. Oh. Well, I, okay. So I'm. I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm behind myself. One or the other. <clears throat> I don't know which is better. Um, does everyone see what I'm saying? It's, okay, so uh, in other words, because K S flips K1 and K0, if you, of course, we, we so we really we only have to know one of these exactness so in the middle here, and then the exactness. Exactly here and here, we know before the flip, the, which is called the index map or the even index map because it ends in K0. And the other map, well, which we I did um, give a, a, a suggestion, a candidate for what it might be, for what it is, in fact, how unique it turns out. Uh, but um, uh, a priori, um, we, we don't have um, exactly some. Um, was coming here, so he's just or he's starting here. But going to um, it's, a, it's a, messing things up a bit. It keeps up to put the zeros. In. So, um, so if you um, do have a map, the even index map, as you do both real and complex, it has exactness on the tail side of the arrow and on the head side of the arrow. But then um, when you flip, you'll get uh, this arrow will get tra uh, transformed into this arrow, into an arrow, which will give you exactness from, give you exactness uh, in the, at the tail and also at the head. So you have a six term sequence then, uh, leaving out the zeros, of course, uh, which is uh, exact everywhere. And this is um, equivalent to bot periodicity, as I pointed out last time, because um, use bot periodicity to establish it from the um, index, the even index, right? And um, <coughs> then to go backwards, take a special case where um, the, um, the algebra B, you have the algebra B as the quotient, and the cone of B is, is the extension, and then the, the cone is things. On the interval zero one, put the zero at the one end and convert at um, at the other end. Continuous at one, and, uh, and the, so if you apply, if, if, well, if you if you um, if you apply the six term is actually equal to this, and using that the, the uh, K groups of C of B are zero, but if it's homotopic to zero, you can just kind of, you can just move it off the uh, off the interval. You can slide it off so it everything goes to zero. And um, you have isomorphism exactly so you have isomorphism so lower end. And um, And this and this is uh, 
this is the this is and says that the that the suspension flips k zero one to one. Okay, this is what this is what we are uh, talking about. And conversely, if from how does this imply that? Or, oh no, sorry, that we just we just so we've done both. This is a special case of uh, of, of the six term one, and the six term one uh, uses this because this is how you get the flip. And furthermore, the reason you have the two equivalent forms is that this one is is easier to prove, okay? Because it's less complicated. And in fact, the um, you look at the uh, you have to get a map from the uh, k zero of the quotient to the um, k one of the ideal. One of the suspension, which um, <clears throat> you have to get a map that uses an isomorphism. But the, but the map you get you use the standard map in the used in the proof and in the book is that um, is the same as the stupid one that I wrote down in the completely general case. But I was completely helpless. I said I was completely helpless to prove exactness for that. One. But in this this is such a special case you can prove exactness. Okay, and. Um, and that's what uh, a, a good part of the course should be about. So that seems to be um, stalling. Even today. <laughs> okay. But um, so very soon we should uh, look look at the um, at what's involved in the proof of of, of the um, of with the um, with the even index that there is an even index map here. It, it, it is just the stupid one I was uh, talking about, but uh, somehow in this case it's manageable. If this map gives you exactly maps, well, it's very easy to show it maps k0 to k1. k0 would be the k1 of the suspension, which is the same as k0. Um, Well, it's K zero of the double suspension. The double suspension. We want to show that this that this act that this very map is an isomorphism. That would mean the double suspension of K zero is the same. Okay. And so, what does what what is the map involved in this case? Well, um, it's it's a, well, it's the same as in as I outlined um, in the general case. So, Calling the stupid map because what use, what use is it if you're helpless to proving exactness? Um, um, here, uh, uh, here, and, uh, and here. So, so you have to start with a projection in B or in a matrix algebra over B. Projection or item for that. And, and as I've mentioned, as the book mentioned, some um, this, this, um, this is the uh, <clears throat> um, proof in the book it has to be carried out at some point, at least at one point, it has to be carried out in the setting of a Banach algorithm. So let's not uh, worry about that. So we have a uh, projection and, um, and um, find this map you don't need to, for the user itself to join. Okay. I'm asking, I shouldn't say, I shouldn't say E because there's going to be an exponential involved, okay? That, I would just ask just ask for trouble to have E in the same formula. Let's say P, P is a projection. Okay. And uh, so what do you do? You, you lift, you don't know projections, lift, that's something else I wanted to talk about. Another application of Oh, that is the one I was talking about. He said, if, if the ideal and the quotient are AF, then the algebra A is AF. And that's a consequence of the name of this projection. But here, the proof involves first lifting it through K elements. Um, um, well, no, you just lift it. So what do you do? You, you, so you have a. Um, actually, it's easier to define the map up here, the stupid, the stupid setting. So you have the projection E here. 
to lift it to an H in A. Everything lifts to some H. And then in this production case, the H could be taken to be a self a joint. And then you, uh, and, and, um, then you assume that A is unital, okay? You can always join the unit. But then uh, you can talk about E to the H. Well, E to the 2 pi I. But then, and, and why am I putting the 2 pi I? Stop. Well, yeah, right. Now, the trouble is, we don't know that H is an idempotent. If H were an idempotent, this would be equal to 1. But then the quotient, it is. E, e maps into E. H maps into E, which is an idempotent. And you take 2 pi i times an idempotent, for instance, 0 or 1, and you have to initiate, and you get some, and you get uh, the unit element. That's, and that's why, I, for that to make sense, I made it through the algebra ahead of you. Power series for exponential involves the unit of the uh, of, and um, well, all right, but that's about it. Um, you, if it's um, it's an invertible element which maps to the unit, then it's in the um, ideal with unit of join, and that and it's the invertible element of that is our definition of k one of the ideal. Okay. So what you what you do down here. I should have said uh, P, I should have said P, by the way. Okay. But then what you do down here is you, um, you just map P to, um, to um, um, E to the 2 pi, pi uh, well, what do you do? Oh, well, it'd be something, um, I said, look, you, uh, it, if you look at the suspension with um, with unit of joint, then what's the unit? Uh, you know, you, that, that, that algebra contains not only a unit, but it contains a z. If you look at the suspension of v, and then um, with the uh, unit of joint, then then that's functions on the um, interval. But it's, yeah, it just converge to one at the end, okay? But then uh, the function constant equal to one will do that, but also the function e to the two pi i t, where t goes from zero to one, okay? So you take some, um, you just, uh, and if you call that z, then it's just z times t. And this then will be invertible inside t. Oh, you can't see this again. Oh, um, it's not. Does everyone know the joke of the painting? Uh, this is not a pipe. Okay. Well, this is this is not a camera. Well, I'm talking to the. I'm saying that talking to the camera. <laughs> so, all right. Um. By the way, um. That's not a joke. I mean, I want to go to fight. So, so, so you take ZP, and so that's in already in K1. If you want to fill it out to be invertible in the unital algebra, you add 1 minus P. Okay? So that's, that, that's the, it's still a stupid map, but now you can work with it. And so we want to prove that this, um, yeah. we want to prove that this gives us an isomorphism of uh, groups. Uh, no, the, we, we, a lot of things to, to talk about, but um, we don't have the room anymore today.